All right, so right now we're gonna do a little ride and chat video. So what the ride and chat is all about is I've been a chauffeur driver uh, most of the time that I've been living here in Austin, I either drove a taxi, I started my own service, I drove for the studio, uh, and now I drive for Uber, which I don't like. I really hate when I have to drive for Uber. Not that I hate people who take Uber or whatever, but it's just, I feel like I'm working for peanuts and uh, people don't really respect Uber drivers, in my opinion. So. With that said, we are on our way. Me and my partner in crime, Mark here. Hello. And um, let's let's find out a little bit about you, Mark. Um, you know, we we got uh, connected through the Gracie University. That's true. I right. went to the the site trying to figure out where there were Gracie academies and if I could train somewhere somehow and. The, the closest one that I could find was in New Braunfels, which I think is no longer in business anyway. Uh, but I was like, well, that's too far away. That would not, ne that would never work. So yeah, I, so I said, oh, there are things called these Gracie garages and uh, I, I could find a training partner that way. And uh, so I looked through the list and lo and behold, in Round Rock was a Gracie garage and J.R. Rodriguez was the uh, garage leader, as they call them. Yeah, and, uh, so Mark, you showed up to come train with me, and um, oddly enough, you are also, you were also a producer at the Public Access Channel. You had your own uh, series that you did, and I did. Yeah, it's almost like your God sent, you know? <laughs> That's true. Because now, I now you're helping me with uh, my um, programs that I'm trying to produce right. uh, at Austin Public, yeah. which used to be called Austin Access TV or ACTV. That's it's, Channel Austin. Right. It's, it's had many, many different, many different, uh, different names. iterations and technological upgrades, which they've done a lot of technological upgrades yeah, and they're since still I doing. was doing it. My series was from 2000 to 2006, mm. uh, and it was called Lube TV. And uh, yeah, we did uh, in those six years, I did uh, 142 episodes, 30 minute long episodes of Lube TV, which was uh, lubricating the social environment through the <laughs> exhi exhibition of uh, short films, music videos, and performance art. And uh, it was a lot of fun. It's also a lot of work, even for just a 30 minute recorded, because you know, it's it's you know getting together with everybody to record an episode uh, finding material to show on the episode and then editing it all together so I tried to keep it as simple as possible and it was still a lot of work and it's still a lot of work it's like for for you know for every 30 minutes of video you can bet there's gonna be two hours of editing minimum you know, so it seems, depending on complexity. And uh, even at the simplest, you know, trying to put together a 30 minute episode could easily take you three hours. So we have been uh, working together as far as like in the garage with the curriculum now, almost five months or has it been five months now? Uh, I think it's uh, five and a half okay approaching six months in my opinion i think that's been working out you know very beautifully uh i think you're somebody who i mean day one he showed up you know before i even met him he was at my garage standing there with a gi on <laughs> and that's right that, that meant a lot that showed me a lot because a lot of people they want to learn jujitsu but they don't want to make an investment of a gi uh, um, for whatever yeah. reason, you well, know. I guess my whole rationale was it's like, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it. And so that means, you know. Do it all the way. Per yeah, purchasing a gi to, uh, to to train. And that's, that's, that's what I wanted to do. It's like, you're either going to commit to something or you're not. 
And so, you know, that was my visual way of saying, hey, I'm, I'm committed to this. You know? How do you feel now, like uh, oh, close to six months in, how's your confidence level? Uh, with the with the program that you're learning a thousand times higher than it was when I started <laughs> um, you know I mean it's a process I mean I don't feel like I, I'm an expert at anything obviously I'm still a white belt mm -hmm. so you know I'm just uh, I'm working the process and, and over time get better and better and it, you know some techniques I, I think I've got down a hundred percent others you know, maybe 70%, you know, it just, it just depends how many times, you know, you build that muscle memory. So anyway, we're heading now to the studio. Um, we're going to go play around with the green screen because I decided that, uh, the show, uh, the shot that I want to do what we're experimenting with here is I'm going to shoot a short movie on uh, blue screen and I'm gonna take images of a bar and try to uh, superimpose that in the background and see if I can pull off a scene that's supposed to take place in a bar and if it works then I'm thinking of of continuing the theme of the show being that uh, I shoot my movies limited to the studio and using green screen and that could be cool again another inspiration from the movie uh, Sin City oh, and shit. we got a nasty little accident over here yeah rear end collision about as commonplace as anything you'll ever see on I-35. Huh. Oh yeah. Somebody that. destroyed the somebody wasn't paying attention. Nope. Uh huh. Busy on their phone or doing interviews in their cars. Yeah, or <laughs> messing with GoPros. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so again, I, I worked on the on the movie Sin City. I was uh, Frank Miller's personal driver, drop a name, um, and so <laughs> <Name dropper. laughs> yeah. But he shot everything on green screen, and so oh, uh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge myself to see if I can figure out how to shoot a whole movie using the green screen and in my style of filmmaking which again is no budget and no script uh, mostly improvised yeah cool so so um i'm gonna be looking for some players so i i'm gonna need you mm -hmm. to uh maybe get on craigslist and put up post up some some ads that we're looking for improvisational actors a casting know? call a casting call yes sir I like right. that I like the way that sounds Did you just come <laughs> up with that that sounds no good. no that's that's industry standard terminology I know that. but yeah <laughs> so yeah let's do a, a casting call and um, so you didn't watch the video huh which the one? Trinidad video I just post posted uh, I need to, it's on YouTube, right? Yeah. Yeah, you said you had sent me an email uh, regarding it. I sent you it. an email with the link to it. Yeah, and... but I never received that email. But anyway, uh, yeah, I'm going to look at it and uh, write up your uh, descriptive blurb. There uh, you go. Beautiful. Okay. And so... So, but back to green screen. So, uh, since you're, you're going to be... Uh, doing a bar scene we need to right build. now right now I'm gonna do a bar scene yes and I'm gonna see if I can get my my daughter's fiance to make me a little um, prop that I can paint green yeah and uh, see if we can make that work for the bar so that I can uh, have an actor stand behind it and mm -hmm. maybe angle it just right so that it meets the height of the bar and so it actually looks like the actor is standing behind the image of the bar. So again, I don't expect to fool anybody like, oh wow, I thought that was an actual location. <laughs> no, 
This is going to be uh, slightly cheesy yeah. in that way that, you know, it's not a high, high end production where, you know, they're, they're, I'm trying to make it look real. I'm just, you're going to have to lend some, you know, imagination to this. So, right. Uh, it'll, I'm sure it'll look but it cool, should be, no it should what. be, it should be entertaining. Mm -hmm. I want to be entertaining and I want to be interesting. Yeah. And so it'll be, uh, it'll be a good opportunity for local actors here that have, uh, improvisational skills, uh, to showcase that right? for sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we could put up, um, I don't know, uh, I do recall the RTF building on the UT campus. Uh, people used to post casting call information as well. I don't know if they still do that, but of course, then there's also the uh, the Texas. I uh, can't remember what it's called. Texas Film Commission or something it has a website where you can pa post casting calls even for unpaid. I, I knew you were the right person to <laughs> believe me. I designate. I answered team. a lot of those casting calls and okay. used to do. You know, extra work. I know you. You obviously did extra work too. I mean, like, but I would just find find shit on the yeah the Texas Film Commission website uh, for casting calls. Got, got a lot of extra work that way. And the other thing too is uh, in the studio. I want to post up an ad too for anybody who wants to volunteer to help with the production of this uh, I'm open to that you know some free help right like a crew crew call there and you your payment is experience call, crew yeah. call <laughs> yeah. I swear you're making it up but. okay the crew, the crew call <laughs> it may be a little iffy oh, but uh, man. anybody out there wants to uh, be a part of the shot mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what to say. I don't know.